scripture reading is taken from the New Living Translation of the Bible, Malachi chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. So guard your heart, remain faithful to the wife of your youth, for I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. And thus concludes the scripture reading, Malachi chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. God is telling us, I hate divorce. A lot of us might be in trouble. Divorces are painful, really painful, for all concerned not just for the couple, but for everybody around them. And divorces overwhelm us with cruelty. Because even though sometimes people, when they're at the early phase of their divorce, they tend to remain civil and nice to each other, after a while they get concerned for their well-being, they get concerned for their basic needs, or they even get concerned for fairness, maintaining the same standard of living, and then the ugly comes out, the claws come out. We panic, and like injured animals, we fight back with all that we have, and let people get hurt. However, if you've been around metaphysics for a while, you probably know by now that we don't take scripture literally. And this is no exception. However, what I just said, I still believe in it. No, this is no exception. God, the God within us, doesn't like divorce. That energy, that love within us doesn't like it. It is cruel. It's not cruel because just of what it is, but it's because of how we behave in a divorce. And God doesn't hate. God is not a person. God doesn't have feeling. God is an amazing life force, life energy, that's, all, that's in all that we are and all that we are connected to. This infinite intelligence. God is in all living beings. God is all living beings. God is us. We are expressions of God manifesting through our bodies. And God doesn't hate us for divorcing. Because in a way that would mean that God hates itself. But still, divorce is not cool. But what is divorce? Divorce is a dissolution a dissociation, a separation. And usually when we talk about divorce, we're talking about two individuals, a separation between the two of them. But we can look at it more broadly. How about a separation from two parts of ourselves? That's a separation from you feel, from our innermost selves, that God within us, that divine spark, and we don't like that separation from that divine spark. So when we say that God hates, it's the part of us that is not in alignment with itself, with its true self, that doesn't feel right, that doesn't feel in alignment when we feel separated from our divine spark. Remain loyal to the wife of your youth. We're not going to be sexist and we just say remain faithful to the love of your youth. Many, many eons ago when we were in the Garden of Eden, that soul of us, uh, that soul within us, we were one with God. We felt totally united with God. But we had to leave that Garden of Eden, the passive state of consciousness, in order to grow. 
When we were in the Garden of Eden, we felt connected with God. And as we left the Garden of Eden, we felt that separation. And we left everything behind. The wife of our youth, that love that we had between us. So scripture here is telling us to maintain that bond with the love of our youth when we were in the Garden of Eden because there is no separation. According to Charles Fillmore, who gave us the, Metaph the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, Malachi represents the voice of conscious in a man that draws attention to his shortcomings and it encourages him to do right. So here Malachi draws our attention to our feeling of separation from God, which isn't the truth of our being. Malachi tells us to not feel separated because we are not separated from God. Yet we live our lives like we are. And if we're not separated from God, our neighbor is not separated from God. And the people that we like are not separated from God. Because they are also united with God, just like we are. And then also, the people that we don't really like they're also united with God. So all the time we think ill will of the people that we don't really care for, we think ill will of God and of ourselves because we are all united. There is no separation. And then it always comes back to us. What is that thing? What is this thing that unites us with God? It's everything. It's all of it. It's all this beautiful energy. And we are also energy. It's the energy of everything that we are. Our breath, our breathing, the air that we breathe, every cell in our body that grows and then bonds with other cells. Dr. Wayne Dyer, um, explained once that he realized that there was a God when he realized that he na his nails were growing. How can that be that nails grow? It was be because of that beautiful life force energy that is God. Your hair, your nails, all the cells moving, that is God. We are all energy vibrating at different levels. And so are the animals. The animal kingdom too. So when we hurt an animal, we are we hurt a part of ourselves. When we go on vacation and abandon an animal, well, I hope we've never done that, but if we do, we abandon that part a part of ourselves too. Because there is no separation. If we don't take care of our animal, we don't take care of ourselves. How about the plant and the mineral kingdom? We are part of it too. It contains life too. It contains that beautiful energy that transforms. When you think about it, like several, several years ago, I went to Arizona to a, a forest um, that has petrified wood. It's a petrified forest. It's stones that transformed, it's, it's all those logs of wood that transformed into stone. That is God as well. Our planet, our beautiful planet, it has a beautiful frequency too, our frequency. And it's energy vibrating as well. And in a way our planet is like that beautiful wife that we are divorcing. It's our beautiful life partner that gives us everything, that creates everything for us. Before the Industrial Revolution, before we were all so smart to build everything, it created caves for us to be protected. It created tree canopies for us to be protected from the sun, from the heat, from the elements. It gives everything that we need for our sustenance. It gives us clean water. And here we come 
millions of us <coughs> doing things not in alignment with our true selves, we forgot. We forgot what we are, feeling separated from a part of us, our planet. In the summer, I like to sit on my front steps and absorb the beauty around me. I sit on the front steps and I look at an old tree in the distance. And then I look at the sky, I look at the clouds, I listen to the birds. I start feeling the environment around me and I feel connected. When I go to the beach, I listen to the waves and I feel connected to the waves. It's called being mindful. The same thing around the mountains. When I, um, I, I, I was, I felt, that, I felt that it was very special for me that I was able to go to Rono because it's surrounded by the mountains, that beautiful, strong energy that, that one sometimes can feel from the mountains. We are all part of it. So being a state of connection with those elements around us can be important. But we feel we get so busy with our lives and our daily routines, we don't make time to connect. We don't make time to connect with ourselves and with our environment. So again, what's connection? How do we connect? It's called mindfulness. When you're in nature, be mindful. When you walk the dog, be mindful of what you are and what you're doing. And I could talk to my children and say, when you walk to school, or if you walk around, put the phone away. Don't put your nose in the cell phone. Be mindful and feel your connection with you and everything around you. Make time to connect. Make time to connect with the life that is within you and the life that is around you. Studies show that mindfulness and meditation reduce stress and anxiety. Would it be because when we are mindful, when we meditate, we feel more connected to our environment and to the life that we have within ourselves? We feel connected with our innermost self. That's because we feel connected with our true self. You know, like many people, I feel concerned about what we do to our planet. I've changed some habits. Uh, I try not to buy single-use straws. I try, I try to bring reusable bags when I go to a grocery store. Um, but it doesn't go much further than that. Yeah, I try to recycle. But I haven't been able to change the big habits, like driving to work. Okay, many years ago, I used to bike to work, and I was a good workout. Now, I was biking to work on 9-11, so it gives you an idea when that was. I haven't really biked since then. But, when we are when we do exercise, when we bike, when we walk to work to the metro, we're also more mindful, more than when we drive. Wouldn't we respect our planet a little more if we didn't have that sense of separation from it? Looking at the sky, the birds, the trees, feeling connected with it, no separation. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. Do not be unfaithful to your planet. When we meditate, we feel connected to our true self, and we're more likely also to receive guidance and peace from within, from our guides, our teacher, or our innermost self. And then we don't feel that separation. Remain loyal to the wife of your youth. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty.
to act as if we were not separated from anything because separation is overwhelming and overwhelming us with cruelty. The anxiety that we feel when we don't feel connected is cruel to ourselves. Knowing that we do things to a body that is not good is cruel to ourselves. And the more we meditate, the more we connect with our true selves, the less likely we are, likely we are going to do these behaviors. Don't be cruel to yourself. Don't divorce yourself. Connect with yourself. Be mindful. Love your God. Love yourself. Love your life. Love your life. Many blessings. Many blessings.